Hey guys, it's Malekith. I'm uh, going to do a quick video explaining some of the basic principles of Kerbal Space Program. It's by no means perfect, and I'm sure I'll say some crap that uh, the people who play this way too much will disagree with, but tough crap. Okay, so you start with your command module. First bit's put a parachute on the top, otherwise it's a very short one-way trip. Just move this up to give me some space to build stuff. Okay, next bit I'm going to do is concentrate on the part of my uh, ship that I'm going to use once I'm already up in space outside the atmosphere. So I'm going to give it a couple of liquid fuel tanks. I found one wasn't quite enough to get into a full orbit. Uh, liquid engine on the bottom. And then a way of steering it. So I'm going to put some of these winglets on. This one up here changes the amount you can put on in a symmetrical fashion. I'm going to go with four just because I feel like it. So that's going to be my uh, orbiter part of the ship. Although I do need to put a detachment module in so that when it's coming back to Earth, it's not trying to land the entire thing. Which brings me on to this section over here. So this is the order things will fire in. The higher the group number, so the lower down the list, is uh, the earlier things that will launch. So coming up the list, you'll see the, the rocket here launches. And then the next time I push space, this decoupler here will fire, which just detaches this top section from the bottom. Okay, next I'm going to uh, focus on the, the main body of the rocket underneath, which uh, will get me up into orbit to start with. So decoupler to make sure I can separate this uh, top section. Now I'm going to go through a tricoupler, which just allows me to get three columns going. Again, I'm going to go with liquid fuel tanks can find them. Ah, one thing I forgot to add. Underneath the top section I want one of these SAS stabilization modules and make sure it flies up nice and straight and doesn't flip around all over the place. I'm gonna try something and stick them on here as well just to see if I can improve the stability of my ship. It's gonna add extra weight but we'll see how that goes. So liquid fuel tanks. some engines on the bottom. Okay, so that's the, uh, this stage here. Next I'm going to put some more decouplers on and go for my initial boost section which will be with solid boosters. Solid boosters burn at full speed the whole time, liquids you can control, but uh, I generally find solids are good for getting started off just at least. Put one on the bottom of each of these. And then using these struts, I'm going to position some more on the side. Manually. Delete this off. really get on with the grid arrangement that these try to go in but and these uh, aren't going to be very symmetrical at all hopefully that won't affect the stability but we'll see these SES things can hopefully counteract it so we attach the rest of the boosters Uh, 
and I seem to have two huge gaps. Let's see if I can strap a couple more on. Uh, this one's going to be tricky. I'll put it in there. Going back to what I said earlier, you want to look at this section over here. So you can see it will fire these ones first, but these three in the middle that I put on first currently won't fire until after all these are dropped off, which isn't what I want. I want them all firing at the same time. So I'm going to drop down. I also want all of them to drop off at the same time, so I'm going to drag these down as well. So I'm only using these struts to basically hold on these extra ones. They're not making use of their uh, decoupling feature. see what else might I want. See if I can get some more of these on somewhere. Probably be handy to have, but I don't know if I can actually get them on somewhere sensible. I'll try doing it manually. It's uh, not going to be very accurate, but we'll see. A lot of this is trial and error, just tweaking a design once it blows up in your face the first time. So that one won't align nicely. I'll try that. Okay, so let's give this a trial. So, first thing, make sure you turn your SAS on. That's pushing T. You'll see the uh, wings go a bit crazy on their own now. That's it, trying to keep the ship stable and upright. Next thing, make sure you increase your throttle to 100 with shift, so that as soon as the solid states boost off and the liquids start, they're at full power, because otherwise you'll just lose speed and uh, until you're outside the atmosphere. You just don't want that. Right, let's see uh, how badly this goes. So it's based on the, uh, solid states, which you can see everybody bearing on crazily. Seems the uh, the coupler didn't break off properly there. And my uh, rocket's now spinning wildly out of control. So this is going to be a very painful death for those guys, especially as the parachute just came off, and they're very dead. So back to the assembler. Let's try that again. So. Let's clear out some of these solids and work on that again. Right then. Let's try and manually line these up into the middle of the wingtip with a gap in between them. But it doesn't seem to like the fact there's another one in the middle there I can't do anything about. So, let's draw board again. Hmm, what else could I do? I guess I could just try a single one off of each. Control it's only to get me started. Once I'm going, hopefully the uh, liquid thrusters will get me the rest of the way.
second, drag these down. Right, let's try that one then. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad again. Um, very wobbly ship, but it seems to be working. SAS on, throttle up to full. Right, let's give this a go. Okay, so that seems to be going up a lot straighter. You can uh, look at the radial dial here in the middle. It will give you the indication of which direction we are uh, sliding off in if you are going off at an angle. This one uh, seems to be going well, so once this fuel hits zero, I'll jettison the solid boosters, fire off the uh, liquids. So, one thing I did do between um, this flight and finishing the last part of the video was I added these support struts in. So I, uh, I did a recording of this stage and the volume was way too loud compared to my voice. You just couldn't hear what was going on, but that's the only change that's gone on. So what this does is it keeps these rockets together, which reduces this wobble that you can see quite a lot. It just makes the whole thing a bit more efficient. So I'll just speed it up. So the key thing now is your altitude and uh, getting out of the atmosphere. So this point here is about 50,000 meters. And uh, past that point you should start looking at establishing an orbit. Probably as you get up to uh, 40,000 ish, you can start tilting over to begin establishing one, but it's not worth doing it too much below 50,000, otherwise, you just end up getting dragged back to Earth and uh, wasting more fuel to escape gravity. Right, so, uh, my secondary set of fuel tanks is about to expire, so I'll drop those off. Fire my final stage. Now I'm going to reduce the speed a lot while I uh, set up the angle I want to go at. So you want to go at right angles to the Earth, or whichever planet they uh, choose to name this. So if I now fire this booster and push M to look at the map view, you can see this arc is the, uh, the path you're ship's going to take with uh, AP being the furthest point from the planet it gets. So as you can see the more speed you get going this direction the uh, wider this arc gets. Equally once you've established an orbit so you want to save some fuel for this. To get back out of the arc again you want to face away from your direction of travel and boost that way which effectively slows the ship down so you get you pulled back into the Earth's atmosphere for a landing. Hopefully in a water body. Landing on the uh, the surface of one of the continents is uh, rather difficult, especially if you hit a mountain, you tend to slide off the edge and blow up horribly. So we're about to get an orbit, so I'm going to kill the engines. So as you see at the moment, we just about have an orbit going on. 50,000 or 52,000 is the closest it gets to the planet. 111 is the furthest. It is possible to set up an elliptical orbit so that it slingshots you in and out again. Let's have an experiment with if I face away from the planet completely. I'll keep it at a slight angle to increase my speed this way as well. And then turn the boosters on. We can see what happens. It starts expanding out. I'll turn those off again to save the fuel. So you can see it expanded it in this arc mostly. This one came out a bit, but it's mostly over here. So if you had enough fuel, I probably haven't got enough fuel tanks on to uh, do it, I should have put a third one on up here at this stage. You could uh, end up with a nice big slingshot arc, which will just keep you going round and round. So we can speed it up as we get away from the planet. So uh, now we're going to look at re-entry. You want to be uh, boosting away from the uh, direction of travel. Now I want to try and end up in this body of water here, so I'm going to try pulling the arc back in now. So which way am I travelling? Difficult to tell at this point, so I'm going to accelerate it a bit more. It will drop pretty quickly once I uh, get in there.
still very difficult to tell which way I'm travelling. So I'm travelling towards the sun with it slightly to the right. So that way. So I want to flip the ship round this way hopefully. a bit of a boost and see what happens to this arc. So as you can see that's dropping rapidly. Let's give it a bit more. So that's come right in. Keep firing some more. It should pull further and further this way. I probably want to stop now because I want to end up in the ocean. Not in this landmass here. Let's accelerate that in a bit. So as you can see, coming in, aiming for the middle of the ocean here. So I can now afford to jettison the last part of my ship. And so now we're into the re-entry stage. So the only thing you have to worry about now is when to deploy the parachute. Uh, I found that once you're below 400 meters per second, it's safe to deploy. And uh, the parachute opens fully at 80 meters per second. So it's all about your angle of entry to uh, that decides whether it opens enough that you don't end up in a huge big fireball when you finally hit the surface. So there goes that part of my ship to uh, do whatever it does. Disappear off into the distance apparently. So I want to watch this speed. This guy seems to be enjoying it. He's not so happy. 400, hit space, deploy that parachute, once this hits 80 this should open fully and there's a gentle drift to the ground. You can land on the surface and the, uh, the earth but uh, if you land on a mountain it will hit down and then it will slide down, you'll fall off a cliff, it will blow up and these guys will be very dead. So it's always best to aim for a body of water. This one's got plenty of uh, height left from the looks of it. it. Should make a nice splash, and then that'll be it. Kind of a bit fine parachute. There we go. So. And then we have a successful re-entry with three surviving crewmen, the best kind. And unfortunately that's where the game ends, I don't know if they'll add anything else in uh, eventually. <laughs>